Hey, it's Alan Tudyk. I just wanted to reach out and welcome you along with the Duke of Wesselton, who would like to say, welcome to Magic Our Way, I suppose, with Kevin and Danny, Eli, and now with Rachel. Not a big welcomer, but okay, welcome. And then also K2SO. And there's a fresh one if you mouth off again. Jumbo, everyone. Harambe. And welcome to another edition of The Magic Our Way. Magic Our Way. Magic Our Way. Magic Our Way. The Magic Our Way podcast. They are truly magical and whatnot. Sante Sun, everyone. You're listening to the Magic Army podcast from New Orleans, Louisiana. And on this show, we invite you to feel the libations. Feel it, feel it. We are artistic buffs talking about dizzy stuff, and this is a show in which every opinion is welcome. MagicArway.com is where you can find us. For this show, we present some news and our own version of Would You Rather, Disney Edition. And look, this isn't your typical polished practice pixie dust and dizzy podcast. No, sir. We are not in the parks every day trying to tell you if anything was done to commemorate the last day of Walt Disney World's 50th celebration. That's right, Kev. We're just here to drink, talk some Disney, and tell you what we'd rather do. That's right. And now all you have to do is listen up while we give you some advice as we drink up. My name is Kevin. And I'm Danny. I'm Eli. And I'm Rachel. Hey, gang. So how's everything going? Good. 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 We just got back from Bluey's Big Play which is sort of a Disney connected thing. It's, you know, in the States, Disney is sort of the purveyor of Bluey, even though they don't own it globally. <laughs> but, right, yeah. but it was great. It was really fun. It was puppets kind of like reminded me a little bit of the way they do the Nemo um, show in Animal Kingdom. Oh, did, could you see like the puppeteers? Saying yeah. That? Oh, interesting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it was cool. But the um, voices were all pre-recorded because it was like the actual voice artists doing it. Oh wow! So oh, it's yeah. not the people that are, the puppeteers. The puppeteers doing the just voice. syncing to the soundtrack. Yes. Oh, that's, that's yeah, crazy. yeah, yeah. It was really cool. Were the kids like, "Mommy, why is that man holding <laughs> Bluey and why he's touching that? him in such an inappropriate <laughs> yeah. way?" Well, <laughs> yeah, no, that is true. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> it did look like that. Uh, well, and sometimes they like turned around, so there was like a big hole in the back of Bluey's head, and they had their like hands in it. Oh, <laughs> how horrifying! <Yeah. laughs> My kid, my kids are six and eleven, so they're not. Uh, the eleven-year-old was kind of coming just for the weekend away. Mm-hmm. Uh, we stayed a few hours away and got a hotel room. But the six-year-old was super into it. I was smart, and right before the curtain opened, I was like, you know what? I should show him a YouTube video of what the play looks like, so that he's not taken by surprise that like actual bluey isn't coming out onto the stage anyway so we like quick watched a youtube clip on my phone of what it was going to look like so he was prepared <laughs> nice and it worked yeah. it was effective yeah that's that? yeah oh. yeah oh my gosh he loved it hot tip <laughs> yeah <laughs> hot tip. tip yeah uh we had a great time though yeah that yeah. was our weekend we got some great food we got ramen bowls in nice. we were in providence um i live in the northeast so yeah, we got ramen bowls, and then we went to this place for lunch today that makes everything out of pretzels, like house made pretzels. So we had, I had like a pretzel BLT. Ooh. We got a jalapeno cheddar stuffed pretzel. Hey, Ooh. there you go. <laughs> yeah, it came with some apricot butter, which was oh interesting, fabulous. All yeah, right. yeah. How was your weekend? Oh man, we Eli and I had a good weekend uh, yeah. yesterday. Like my wife had, went to Galatoire's. It's a very upscale uh, restaurant. Got your ice chips? I don't know. Like she did her own thing. And Eli and I came over and we hooked up another friend of ours and we went and wow, what, yeah, we, we went, went to uh, bar hopping bar a little hopping. bit with my daughter. No, down <laughs> in the quarter then. No, we were, no. Uh, we went to, we had to go to restaurants because, and we would go to the restaurant bar because ah, okay. we had my daughter with us. So we went to Ralph's in the Park. We went to uh, Parish Line Bistro. Oh, yeah, nice. Was, a couple of different cool. places. Yeah. And then uh, we got home and then my wife slapped Eli and yeah. <laughs> that was fun. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. She did. Well, I slapped the shit out of me. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently, I, I had it in a headlock earlier. Yeah. And, 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 you put Anna in a headlock? I did, but it was on It's of, WrestleMania weekend. He's yeah. feeling it a little <laughs> much. <laughs> exactly. I was kind of like, what do you think? What do you think? And, you know, I was like, I'm just glad to have all you here. Rawr. Oh, my gosh. The next thing you know, pow. Uh, yeah. Right in the kissy. 
That's, that's why that's why this man stays in line if she hits like that okay. <laughs> i totally get it I do you totally remember the hit it. or did you drink so much that it was like not so bad i don't remember exactly what <laughs> led, led up to, to it i don't remember that but i do remember getting the <laughs> back out of me. I, I, I so did. effective she she was able to cut through yeah. your drunken fog mm-hmm and you remember that smacked him back to snowboarding. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, what smacked she did. the drunk right out of him. We've had we we've had uh, situations before where she's hit me with objects during our ten years as friends, but uh, that's Aww. the first time that yeah, she open came hands, with, open hands, flat, skin like, to skin, paintbrush, paint, just wow. Aww. It's like yeah, like isn't it like a there's like a video somewhere? This guy just smacks everybody, smacks like all his family. Yeah. He smacks the <laughs> yeah. cops. Yeah, it was like that. He was Chris Rock. She was Will Smith. Will Smith. Oh, yeah, not that anniversary well. was this past Monday. I lost yeah, the I lost the ago. taste out of my mouth for four hours. <laughs> <laughs> I had to you go keep back the home taste and out drink that mouth. Yeah. So if, my day about your if you were a loved one, have ever been slapped? <laughs> <by a friend>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Don't know but, too Oh man, how was your weekend, Kev? Yeah, oh, Kev? nothing. So I, I was playing a show. So I was like, I worked in the evenings. All work mm. and stuff. Yeah. Oh. yeah we close. Like Can that. you say which show you're working on? I don't know. Yeah, well, it's, I finished. I uh, just finished a run of You're in Town over at. Uh, you're in Mata. town. Yeah, it's called You're in Town. It's interesting. You're in. You're in like, town. No, you're no, in. it's exactly what you think it sounds you're like. In yeah, pee. like pee, like uh, yeah, liquid <laughs> defecation. <laughs> It's That's a, cool. It's kind of an out there show, man. I've heard of it before. Yeah, yeah. It, there was it a portal. Is not April Fool's Day. Right? It is not April say, Fool's. Yeah. No, I, <laughs> no. We ended on April Fool's, which is kind of funny. Interesting. Uh, yeah. It's, does R. Kelly have a soundtrack? <laughs> you know, but he, he should have. <laughs> he should have done that. Wow. Yeah. So wow. The whole thing is about what it's an ode to <laughs> urinating. Well, no, the whole thing is like uh, something happened to the water supply, and so this one pers- rich person is mon- monopolizing the, the supply of water, which therefore you have to regulate the way people are able to use the bathroom. Sounds like a plot of China. So it's like, yeah, so it's like, you know, nobody can legally use the bathroom. Mm. Yeah, you know, regardless, you only have to use these public amenities, and that's it. And so there's, you know, the the poor people they're taxing them, they're they're issuing fees and stuff, and then it's almost kind of like what was it Lemurs or Rob, where the poor people fight back. Hmm. But there's not a happy ending because you know the poor people don't know what they're doing, and then the water gets tainted again, and so they they it, it just kind of ends on a somber note with lots of oh. oh, oh. What a pisser. I, uh, yeah. <laughs> 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 That's accurate, man. That is accurate. <laughs> oh, my God. That's awesome. In many ways, oh yeah. <laughs> we could do a whole show on it because I'd, uh, I'd like to know a lot more about this. <laughs> we could do a Magic Hour where he talks about Broadway shows. I like your... And discuss I, yeah. your in town, yeah. I like the plays that and stuff that you work on because they're, they're very interesting. Man, it's never that, the same thing there. twice. Nope. This is totally different from Tina Turner. Wow. <laughs> You're yeah, in town. many ways, yeah. So that's right. how my weekend. So well, let's I, talk Disney. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. 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 All right, let's get back to talking about some Disney guys. So, would you rather our jibber or our jabber? Either way, that's enough of that. Let's get on with the show. <laughs> in the queue the segment in which we get to talk about all the news and happenings in the world of disney today and i will turn it over to our travel agent rachel who's got some news about the florida parks and whatnot yeah well i feel like this is i'm wearing more of my social studies teacher hat processing all of this but you know it's a a story that people are talking about when other teachers come up to my classroom and they're like hey are you following that Disney thing? <laughs> I'm like, yes, I am. Yeah, definitely. And they like want to, like, oh, I knew you would be. I want to talk to somebody about it. And that happened to me a couple of times this week. So nice. I was like, this must be a, a real deal story. So yeah, so we'll kind of go back through it. If you haven't figured out which story we're talking about, we're, we're going to be talking a little bit about some of the Reedy Creek back and forth with the Disney board and Ron DeSantis and the Florida legislature. I'm going to give you a little bit of history, kind of context of what's been going on. And then, you know, we'll just kind of chat around like what Disney has done in response and how this whole thing has worked out. It's been a trip. So this is about a year ago, this whole thing started a little over a year ago, the Florida legislature took up the parental rights bill 
it was like parental rights and education was sort of the technical title, the title like written title, but it was dubbed the don't say gay bill. And that's what most people kind of referred to it as in the media and, you know, outside of the Florida legislature. That was how it was more commonly known. And if you remember, since we're talking about a little over a year ago, Bob Chapek was the CEO, not Bob Iger. And Bob Chapek, he kind of whiffs the response here, right? So he initially comes out, I'm, I'm going to use the word vanilla. It was a vanilla response initially. And that really upset a lot of LGBTQ plus allies and cast members that worked or work for the company. And JPEG got a lot of pressure to be a little bit more forceful in the company's response to this bill. And so then he seems to do a pretty incredible 180 and releases a statement very much against the bill, pledges that Disney won't give campaign dollars to Florida legislators who support this bill, and just a really strong statement against this bill. And that makes Ron DeSantis upset. Ron DeSantis decides that this is going to be something that he's going to respond to now. And he announces that he believes the Disney company has lost its way, and that he's going to organize an effort to dissolve the Reedy Creek Improvement District and, you know, have sort of like a another check on the Disney company that they have, you know, a little bit too much freedom and flexibility in their their processes. So that's sort of like the background, right? That's where we started last year. And there was initially a bill signed that was going to dissolve the Reedy Creek Improvement District. And if you're not familiar with what that is, just like in real short, the Reedy Creek Improvement District was a a public board that was um, full of elected board members elected by landowners in the district, which is pretty much just Disney, right? They're like the only people who own land in the district. So it was a board that was installed by Disney, pretty much operated and influenced almost entirely by Disney. And it allowed Disney to pass permits and, and other kinds of things that they could do to make the planning of the theme parks as optimal for them as possible. Walt did this in response to what happened in Anaheim, which was he didn't have a lot of control over what popped up next to the theme parks. And he didn't have a lot of control over permitting processes and how fast things could move. Mm -hmm. And so the Reedy Creek Improvement District was an opportunity for the Disney company to really call the shots in Florida. And they did um, for quite a long time. And so then summer of 2022, This law was signed by the Florida legislature that would dissolve the Reedy Creek Improvement District. And it turns out that that was kind of complicated because the board had been really influenced by Disney the whole time. They had full control of planning, permitting, and decision-making about land use in the district, which covered almost all of Walt Disney World property. They also had quite a bit of debt that had been issued for different projects. And if they had been dissolved, that debt would have then defaulted back to the municipalities, which would have been taxpayers in Osceola County and Orange County, Mm -hmm. which was a big concern for taxpayers, for legislators, everybody. It was like, it was a a bad situation. (laughs) And so that really couldn't happen. And so things had sort of stopped, but there was still this bill on the table that said by June of 2023, there is no more such thing as the Reedy Creek Improvement District. So because of this debt, DeSantis and his allies, they kind of have to have a new plan. And so what they did was recently, so now we're at this year, in the last few months, they passed a new legislation that does not dissolve the district But what it does do is it rebrands the district and it changes the rules about how the board members are picked. So the district now is called the Central Central Florida Tourism Oversight District. Very snappy name. (laughs) Yeah, it kind of rolls off the tongue. Yeah. 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 Uh, So now it's the Central Florida Tourism Oversight District. The governor gets to appoint five members to the district board. So they're no longer elected by landowners, which is like kind of an interesting, I don't know, there's, I feel like there's a lot to unpack there, but yeah. but yeah, so the governor can now appoint the members of this board. They're not elected by landowners and they actually can't be people who have theme park experience within the last five years. 
So they have to be people that aren't kind of connected to the theme parks. And it's kind of worth mentioning here that through all of this, the governor like rebranding the district, the legislators passing all of this. Now we've got four new board members. Disney really didn't push back at all. In fact, like Jeff Valley and Josh Damaro made a lot of statements that were kind of like, we're looking forward to this new partnership or, you know, like that wasn't their exact words, but that was kind of like the volume that Disney was taking on this was like, we're optimistic that we'll be able to work together. Like no sweat was sort of their volume. And so DeSantis kind of comes out and says, uh, this press conference where he's signing it and making it permanent, that the board would serve as a moral arbiter for the company and a company that had lost its way. That was sort of his quote. Um, and so that was his intention was to to have this board be this moral arbiter, but also somebody who's just going to be a check on Disney. And so they had their first meeting in early March. And then at the second meeting, they announced that they can't go forward with their agenda as planned because they have found out that Disney actually took away all of their powers before <laughs> they actually became a board. So it was 19 days before DeSantis actually signed the final bill. The Reedy Creek board, the old people, the old crew, actually gave up all of their powers and gave them over to the Disney Corporation. Like, full stop. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the board now, this new board, the Central Florida Tourism Oversight District board, can do little more than maintain roads and basic infrastructure. That's pretty much all they can do. That's all that's left. This law that, or not the law, but the, the motion that the board put through to sign their powers over to Disney, I guess I've I've been reading in these articles, you can't have um, something like that that's written into perpetuity, which means like indefinitely or forever. And so kind of the funny twist here is that in order to make it a forever thing, but not actually do that because you can't, they have written the law that this is the case, that, that this board doesn't have those powers, that those powers belong to the Disney Corporation mm -hmm. until 21 years after the last descendant of King Charles III has passed. <laughs> I love it. That's my favorite. Yeah. That's so that's a long time, right? Because King Charles III is currently the King of England and he has a number of grandchildren already. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we imagine that mm -hmm. they will have children and uh, and so on and so forth. And so that's going to be a while. Um, so it's not a perpetuity, but it might as well be. Yes. Until the death of the English monarchy. That's right. Yes. yes. Until the English 21 monarchy years no after the, exists. Yes. Yeah. 20 years yeah. after that, too. You know, it's only been centuries, right? So what are the odds? What are, yeah. <laughs> what are the odds? I don't know um, if I take that bet, but yeah, sure. Yeah. And this was actually done completely in the open. They posted the agenda online. Like you didn't even have to request this information. Like it was publicly published that they were going to be doing this. It was done in an open session that could be attended by the public. I actually, and this, this I'm not a hundred percent on, but I, I'm pretty sure that this is right. Len Testa actually went to this meeting, I believe because he was like tapped on the shoulder and said like you might want to come to this meeting and even he didn't understand what they were doing even though he was there because wow. um, i remember him reporting on it afterwards and being like yeah they did some stuff i don't know it seemed like a normal meeting but i'm pretty sure this was the one that he was asked to go to or or not asked to go to but like somebody was like hey heads up you might want to check this out anyway but like even the media like the journalists who have been following this story for a year like this is their job they didn't realized that this is what Disney had done. Oh, yeah, um, yeah. It's kind of a surprise to everybody this week. I read an article by NPR about this, and they even admitted, yeah, we totally didn't even see this coming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like, a, it's like a heist movie, isn't it? Yeah. Like, a little bit. It feels a little like Iger's Eleven or something, you know? <laughs> Iger's Eleven. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, so the, the, end of, or the update for now is that this, this stands and uh, the board plans to pursue legal action and see if there are some holes that they can overturn this. But for now, all they can really do is uh, run those roads and plan those sewers and that's it. I got to say, man, respect to Bob Iger. Jeez. <laughs> I mean, that's funny. We don't normally like to we try our best to stay as apolitical as possible. But I mean, when it comes to this kind of shit, man, it's it's like, you know, like give her what what's uh, what's that uh, Gordon Ramsay. When he's sitting there oh. yelling at people oh, and you're like, Hell's oh, Kitchen? Hell's that kitchen. dude's an yeah. evil 
asshole and somebody needs to punch him in the face. But then you watch him yell at somebody who deserved it. And you're kind of like, yeah, well, okay. I can kind of go along with that. <laughs> That's what this feels like a little bit. It's like, man, I don't like Iger, but damn, he yeah. played this man. Oh, yeah. And publicly, publicly embarrassed him, like humiliated this man. It, it, mm-hmm. It's so deliciously evil the way Bob Iger did this. I mean, bravo. I mean, just respect. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yes. Absolute respect. It's, wow. It's, it's like it's, it's like a telenovela for me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like watching Michael Myers. Like, you don't want to be the one Michael Myers is chasing. Yeah. <laughs> like, as, yeah. as people have had to deal with Bob Iger's policies for years, you don't want to be the one he's after. But when you're kind of on the same side as him, it's kind of like, ooh, he's really talented at what he does. Yeah. Right. I don't, <laughs> that's, that's incredible. They'll probably walk it up on those politicians like, yeah. Y'all was playing checkers. We <laughs> were playing chess. You understand? Yeah. Like, it does feel like that. 4D yeah. chess. 4D exactly. evil chess, Big Bang man. Theory level chess, yes. Yeah, that is amazing. And like a telenovela, it's like, and the guy's like, you got to fire that kid. It's like, yes, I can't fire that kid. And the, and the guy's like, why? Because <laughs> that's your son, too. <laughs> dun, dun, dun! <laughs> <laughs> no. No. Yes. Zoom, zoom, yeah, no. yes. Yes. <laughs> Just I mean, like that. When you think about like what, what Bob Iger did, not only that, like the the the, the way Bob Iger forced Bob Chapek to take a side in this by publicly tweeting out like, the, "I stand with the president," and this would be so harmful to you know members of our LGBTQ community and everything like that. And then all the employees from Disney they see this and they're like, "Yeah, we don't like this either." Walk out, force Bob Chapek to take a stance. He does it, gets lambasted for it, stripped him to like. This makes Bob Iger look so good, but evil, but good, but evil. Foul I mean, little it's, mind works. It's <laughs> crazy. It like really, you have to admire the way he did this. Like, however you feel about the bill itself, like I look, I don't know enough about the bill to be able to say one way or the other. My understanding was it was I watched Bill Maher. That's the only that's as political as I get. And he called the Don't Say Gay bill the bill that basically said, let's do everything the way we did it five years ago. It, it wasn't. It basically was like, it, it never says anything about not saying gay. It doesn't say anything like that. It's basically, let's not teach kindergartners through third grade anything about sexual orientation and whatnot. And I, I got no problem with that. Some people might. Okay, cool. Whatever. You know, there's a discussion to be had there, I suppose. I've always equated it to teaching calculus before you teach kids two plus two equals four. Like, I don't know about you guys. I didn't learn sex ed until I was in seventh grade, like, let yeah. alone sexual orientation or anything like that. So, I mean, however you feel about the bill, put that aside. I don't like the idea that the governor of a state would target a company and attempt to punish them because they took a, a public stance that was in opposition of something that they stand for. Or stand for, right. Or part of them. Pub- like, free speech should not be, like... I don't agree with the Disney company standing out and taking a stance on this. I, th- I think that, yeah, I think Bob Chapek's uh, initial response was right. I think he got strong armed into taking a more public, uh, more forceful stance on this. And yeah, and then I think the the governor of Florida looks like an ass. Uh, like, like basically, we're going to punish you. Not every special district in Florida. Like, it'd be one thing if if Ron DeSantis it was very targeted. Yeah, it's like any. We're dissolving all special. All special districts are gone. It was just. Oh, we don't like the fact that you didn't go along with what we wanted. So screw you. We're taking away your special district. Yeah. Well, you know what? He actually he did. Like he tried to target a lot of the special districts, but it got shot down by a higher court mm. as like not legal did or unconstitutional, it. I believe. Is that, do you know about that, Rachel? Or, or? I don't know about that. I know that one of the things that they were initially concerned about was that the special, like Reedy Creek was created in a similar way to a special district that runs the villages, if you're familiar with that retirement community in um, Florida. And I don't think they wanted to mess with that one. And so my understanding was that they were one of the reasons why the legislation was so targeted and so specific was because they wanted to avoid messing with the village's special district. I just did a quick Google search here and there are 1,932 official Florida special districts. Damn. Yeah, there's a ton. There's a ton. The fact that only one of them got targeted for elimination 
I don't think he's I don't think he's being secretive about it. Like no. I think DeSantis like is very happy to have anyone know that he's specifically targeting the Disney company. You know, I was dis- I I was disappointed in Chapek's initial response. I felt like, you know, Disney cashes in a lot of times on being supportive of the LGBTQ plus community and for that to be going on in the Florida legislature and for them to just sit by silently while they continue to sell rainbow t-shirts, I thought was hypocritical. Mm. Um, and so I, I was glad that they, they did come back with a little bit more full voiced opposition to that bill. But I was really surprised when a lot of the more recent things that were going on with the Reedy Creek district was, were happening and Disney seemed to just be letting it happen. And I thought like, what a weird, like, why, why are they letting this happen? Like, why are they not pushing back or getting their attorneys involved? Like there's got to be a hundred ways that they could poke holes in this, that like having the governor essentially take over a publicly elected board and like install five people on like, that just feels like it's got to be against anyway. So I was shocked that Disney wasn't doing anything. And then this, this came out and I was like, Oh, <laughs> yeah, no, it, it, it was a total Muhammad Ali move with the yeah, rope dope, rope, you know? That's a great and analogy. Then, but when you come back and then when Ali's ready to come, you're so tired, you can't react. And it's the same kind of thing. The Santa was so hyper-focused on what he was trying to do that he totally ignored the publicly thing that Dizzy was happening and just didn't pay any mind to that because he wanted to push his own little whatever yeah. agenda yeah. that he's got going no, on. It's, it's he was a, totally like, what do you call it? The, uh, with the horses and tunnel vision. Tunnel tunnel vision. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Blinders. blinders on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, had, he had blinders on. He, he, he couldn't see it. And Dizzy Legal was uh, doing their stuff. Can I ask Rachel a question real quick about this? Because, I mean, yeah, yeah, Rachel's probably a lot more politically uh, aware than most of us. But my understanding of things, and, and, and so I'm just giving you my understanding of things and you tell me where I'm wrong. My understanding of things is that this bill had to do with, as I said before, teaching children between kindergarten and and third grade anything about sexual orientation is there more to it than that than what we've been told like is is, is, like you said you kind of wish they would have said more why don't you explain to us what else there was behind it besides that yeah well so i want to be upfront that i did not read the full legislation i'm going to guess that there are a lot of florida legislators that didn't read it either (laughs) to be honest i mean there are hundreds of pages right apparently not Um, yeah Yeah. Yeah. So I didn't read the full thing. My understanding from, you know, the various sources that I have, you know, looked at to understand it better is, is yes, that, that, that is kind of what the target, what you said is, is essentially what the target of the bill was, but ultimately like, I don't, that isn't happening. You know what I mean? Like, I don't believe that that is really uh, something that was occurring. And so the question became, if we're I, we're not teaching those things in kindergarten, and so what we are teaching is we are, and I, I say we, but I I don't mean we. I mean <laughs> what was happening in the schools. royal we, yeah, the yeah. royal we, royal humans, we. yeah, yes. that's what I mean by we. What was happening was you know teachers were reading books that have different types of families in them, like picture books, you know, that have like different types, you know, different models of what a family can look like, and people didn't like that. And I wouldn't call that sex ed personally. Sure. You know what I mean? Like I would call that as just like we're representing a lot of diversity and that there are a lot of different ways that you can live your life. And, you know, we're, we're not talking about it explicitly. It's just sort of embedded in this material that's really about something completely different, but that those kinds of things would also not be allowed. And that, I, you know, that's something that, that I would oppose as a voter. If I lived in Florida, I would not want, like, I, I would want my kids to be exposed to different types of families in, in picture books in kindergarten. So that's, that was kind of my understanding and where, where I was coming from, where I felt like I wish the Disney company was going to say something more full throated was that I, I do think it's important to represent different types of families, even at a young age. And mm-hmm. it doesn't mean we're teaching about like the, birds and the bees <laughs> it's yeah. just you know everybody has some different families and sometimes they look different and they're built different and that's okay so would you be okay if like did like maybe chapek would have stepped out on this one and said you know here at disney we're all about treating each other with dignity respect and and, and equality would that have been good or or do you feel like taking more of a hard uh, a hard stance against this bill was was a little bit more appropriate yeah, I thought the hard stance was more appropriate. I think his first statement did kind of what you just said. We're yeah. sort of like, that's not how we operate. And then 
I believe the very first statement, he said something to the effect of like at Disney, we're going to continue to represent all different types of people in our in our content was what he said was like, we're going to continue to rely on our content to be representative of lots of different people. Sure. And I had hoped at the time that he would have been more outspoken that this was something that goes against what the company believes in. Because obviously, yeah, Disney does make content for people over the age of third grade, right? I mean, so I think we could all agree with that, right? Is that the idea that, yeah, more people should be represented because Disney's not making movies for third grade and below. Below, right. Right. I can see that. Like, for example, in Doctor Strange, the Multiverse of Madness, America Chavez has two mothers. And it's not like it's not like a plot point, you know what I mean? But it's just there. I think that's a good example of how the Disney company kind of represents um, a wide view of what families can look like. Well, Strange World, for I mean, they represented every. I mean, it was Strange World. They had the handicapped dog. They had the son was gay, I believe, right? And then the mother and the father were multiracial, or what do you, what's the word? Uh, what's the what, interracial? interracial? Interracial, thank you. Like my family? <laughs> there you go, like your family. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, yeah, like even something like that, which I didn't see the harm in. I don't yeah. necessarily. Yeah. But there are some people that do, interestingly well, enough. I guess fair enough. Uh, People have their own limitations on what they think is acceptable and when children should be. But that's the thing. And unless you, unless Disney decides to get into a new rating system where it's like we're rating movies for these movies for kids that five and under. This is for yeah. five to eight. This is from eight to ten. Like, <laughs> but at that point, you're chopping it pretty fine. Like, I think kids do pretty well. Like, as long as you don't draw attention to something that really needs explanation on the parents' behalf, kids, they accept what they see. And walk on about and, their business. And walk on about their business, and they don't... I mean, don't no, I mean, they're, they're, the children are definitely more accepting than, like, I guess, educated adults. They're accepting, but they're cruel. Well, they are yeah, cruel. Yeah. yeah, but... Children are really... But sometimes the cruelty is learned from the parents. Yeah. Uh, I will give it that. You know, yeah. it gets passed down. Well, the fear is always yeah. comes from something if you don't understand it. Yeah. You know, uh, that's that's My definitely a thing. kid got teased mercilessly for bringing seaweed in her lunch one day. Just because she liked seaweed. And so we, like, she would eat it at home. And so one day we packed it for lunch and she eats seaweed. Like, oh my God, what are you eating? And that's it. That's all it took for them to go off. Right. Well, those so, kids have not had the teriyaki seaweed snacks from Trader Joe's. <laughs> hey, I haven't had the teriyaki seaweed snacks. From I home. love. I highly Trader recommend. Mm. But yeah, kids can be cruel. Oh, kids yeah. can no, absolutely cruel. be cruel. And they will point out. I mean, we like to think that kids are open minded and accepting. No, they're kind of. Oh yeah, but they can be as long as something is presented to them, they can be accepting of it. Like it's so weird to hear my child talk about how anti-bullying they are, but meanwhile, every activity that she describes is total bullying. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> and every right. they had a group text with Jeff. Shut up, shut up. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, we're way off track here, I'm sure. But I, I was just kind of yeah. looking to learn a little bit more about this because I really don't know that much about it, and I really don't have an opinion on it to be quite honest. Uh, but what I love about this is that Disney at the end of the day is a corporation and people can decide to tune in or not tune in based on their wallets. They can go or they can not go. And if the public has a problem with what Disney's doing, they can jump ship. This is different. This is a governor saying, Oh, we don't like what you're doing. So we're going to screw you on this. Uh, the whole, the Reedy Creek thing was a win-win for Florida, and it was a win for Disney. It made both parties feel good about what they were accomplishing. They both got something out of it. It was it all the prosper. It's one of the main reasons no why Central Florida, yeah. right, right. Why Central Florida is like relevant. At to this just point. Yeah. use Disney and, and, and this whole thing as a political tool, I'm so happy this man got publicly embarrassed. <laughs> like, I, I can't tell you how much. Like I saw that. I don't know if y'all saw this, but when they were interviewing the members of the board, the Florida Tourism, whatever the too many yeah. word board, um, the of, Central oh, Florida, Florida Tourism Oversight District. Yes, and they were talking about how angry and disappointed they were in Disney for how they conducted themselves. And I'm like, dude, that's like blaming a victim that you're if you're a murderer and you're trying to kill somebody that's like blaming the victim like well i thought you were gonna let me kill you and here you go fighting back and running away and it's totally just ruined my day what do you want your life <laughs> like, seriously like how 
who the balls to just say something like yeah. that? Yeah. No, I, I totally agree. It's, it's like saying you should have specifically told me what you're going to do. Right. Even though it's been like up on this big billboard yeah. for in your house yeah. for like years. In your face. Like, here it is. This is what I'm doing. Yet you chose to ignore it because whatever. So. Look, I'm not no corporation president or nothing, but I know enough when it comes to like civil liberties or something like that. You don't want to be the person that has to make a comment on that kind of stuff because you don't win. You, you're you going to offend somebody on, on either side. And really, I don't really blame uh, Disney if they're like, nah, we're going to we, we're inclusive. We will hire who we, you know, who we feel is representative of the company and here's the movies or whatever you want, but that's it. We're fiction. You don't need us to make some sort of statement about kids in schools. Mm-hmm. That's, that's where I kind of was like, I, I get that. And I, if I was JPEG, I'd be like, yeah, I'm, 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 you know, <laughs> I wouldn't want nothing on that. No, but for, again, though, like you said, though, but for the, the DeSantis guy to go ahead and come back and say, Hey, if you don't want to be on board, what I'm saying, I'm taking my ball and going home. Yeah, you know, yeah. And, and that's that's He's taking the, your ball and going home. Yeah, and then it's yeah. like, well, wait a second. I mean, we own this stuff. You just can't. I just that's what I think is funny about Disney coming back and said, all right, well, here, you know, here's this new law. Now you guys deal with this. This is going to be paperwork that's just going to mm-hmm. go on forever because that's yeah, how really. red tape works. Well, and, and the good news in that, I, I guess, would be that. Uh, DeSantis is going to be gone in a couple of years anyway. Oh, that's the thing right. that point I was going to make is like, yeah. the, you know, you mentioned public has a decision to make with Disney. Uh, the public that, that supports Disney, it's much bigger than the public that voted DeSantis in, right? Because uh-huh. only the people in Florida can vote their governor. Correct. Sure. Whereas right. the people that patronize Walt Disney World Properties come from all over. Global. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. They're glo- it's global. Yeah, it's, it's no doubt it's global. I mean, and it doesn't make sense to, to say, okay, we're going to make a new committee that has no experience. I get it. They don't want to be influenced by this. I get that. But it's like, how are you going to pick a set of people that don't know how anything works in an area that's run by a theme park? I mean, that's like that's like inviting a carpenter over to Popeye's and say, go ahead, fried chicken. Like, you know? <laughs> That's not how it works. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I hear that. Yeah. Um, you know, while I was doing some research on this, though, I did find the the firefighters at Reedy Creek were looking forward to having new people on the board because they feel like they have been underfunded and kind of under acknowledged and understaffed. I heard that. I thought yeah. that was interesting. I hadn't heard that before, and so I, you know, I was glad to find like a different perspective anyway so that's something to like have on the radar i guess sure firefighters and who's gonna pay for ron DeSantis to continue to fight disney on this the taxpayers yeah yeah i mean who loses the, the citizens of florida yeah. yeah the lawyers win for sure oh god <laughs> disney legal yeah 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 uh yeah that is one thing i i would like to say to ron DeSantis though just to be a hundred percent above board here if you're going to pick on a company that has more capital than a small country, most small countries, <laughs> <laughs> and you're dealing with a government budget, I'm going to guess that their lawyers are going to beat your lawyers every time. Oh, I'm pretty sure of that. I would step away from this if I was Ron. He know he's not going to, but... Well, there's ego in play. Yes, yeah. there's yeah. A, a lot of ego. There's a guy making a, a, a bid for the presidency, but um, I think he's... He's barking up the wrong tree. I think Bob Iger is going to make him look like a joke. Cool, guys. So let us know what you think about this whole situation. Uh, like we said, we try to keep it to the facts and stuff, trying not to get, uh, check our biases at the door for sure, and just talk about this plainly as, as the telenovela that it is. Um, let us know what you think, man. Show at magicrway.com. Here we are in the hub, our main topic segment of the show, and we're just going to flip it a little bit, not be t- completely serious, and have a little fun with this exercise. Sure. We need some fun. Yeah, a little bit of fun. And as I mentioned at the top of the show, we're doing our own version of Would You Rather. And this is kind of similar if you were listening to us during the pandemic, the lockdown, we did a show called This or That. Yeah, same kind of premise, but you know, we, we, we decided each of us... Um, we were putting our, together our own Would You Rather show, so there'll be multiples of these yes. in the coming months, you know, all the way up to our 500th or whatever. 
Um, and so I get the honor of leading off this little exercise just right. for a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I guess let's do some, would you rather man? So basically simple rules is I'll just ask you, would you rather this? Would you rather that? Mm-hmm. And you just chat about it, make your decision and we'll see what happens. Some All of right. these are easy. Some of these are, are a little thick, but, um, how about we start some, with something pretty simple, right? Mm-hmm. All right. First question. Okay. Would you rather a Disney cruise to Hawaii or to Alaska? Mm. Ooh, money was no object. Alaska, Alaska. Okay, Alaska. If I'm going to Hawaii, I don't want to be in a cruise ship. I want to be able to roam those islands on my own. I don't want to have to go back and stay, you know, on the on the ship. I want to be able to sleep. You want to control the adventure in in, in, in a room, yeah. in a resort. On yeah, I think I think Alaska by cruise ship better than Hawaii by cruise ship. I could see that. You just that. sold me. I was just going to totally go Hawaii. <laughs> well, I mean, I've done Alaska, so I was like, oh, I want to go to Hawaii. But w- when you said that, I was like, you're right. I do want to, like, sit and enjoy. I mean, I cannot wait to go to Alani. Yeah. So, um, but that's what I, that's how I want to do Hawaii. I don't want to do it by cruise ship. So, yeah, I'm with you. I think Alaska. Yeah. Who wants to get off of a cruise ship and step on an iceberg? Nobody. Well, that, that's, 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 my great, yeah. <laughs> that's my thing. It's, like, totally warmer in Hawaii than it is in Alaska. I, I want to see Alaska. I want to mm-hmm. see all the... The ice and the... Isn't that where the Aurora Borealis is at, right? The yeah. Mountains. Oh. You can see God. the lights from the ship. Imagine yes. Imagine seeing the that on a cruise lights. ship, being right over the wall. Oh, It's like fireworks, but different. Great. Yeah. yeah you I have would to think st- that. better. You have to stay up, though, like 2 a.m. It's oh, that's tough. easy. Easy. <laughs> oh, Holy. Oh, <laughs> 2 a.m. Did, we did that. <laughs> I mean, no, New Orleans is close to like, like 6. Yesterday. They say yeah. New, York, New York is the city that never sleeps. Bull. I was in New York. They shut down at around 11, 12. Not New Orleans. No. You know, oddly enough, not New Orleans and not Montreal, both French places. Get out of here. Yeah, I, w- I played a gig on Montreal like years ago, and I'm, and, and I'm like, it's like four o'clock in the morning, and there's like traffic down below. I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> wow. I was in London. Yeah. And I was in France. You saw Thank you. We had to go there. All right. <laughs> Find a pub after hours in London was tough. Yeah, yeah. Finding a place yeah. to go to in France after hours. Not that hard. Oh, good to know. I roll. Oh, those French the- people. Oh, yeah. That makes sense. That mm-hmm. makes sense. So everybody, everybody is cool with uh, uh, Disney Cruise to Alaska. Yeah, yes. that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. So um, let's do this one. This is one for my kids. All right. Let's say you're only allowed to visit one park for your entire week long trip. Ooh. Wonderful. Would you rather Magic Kingdom or Epcot? Ooh. That's for my kids. That's devious. That's kids my kids. Are tough. Yes, um, yeah. They, a they, week? They do that. A week long vacation, but you're only allowed to do one park. What? A and one. for some reason, they chose Magic Kingdom or Epcot. Well, that makes sense why they would chose that. Uh, Animal Kingdom yeah. technically still a half day park. Hollywood Studios. Um, it's in the it's in the running now, but Epcot and. Well, you could drink at Epcot, so I would have to take Epcot. Yeah, that's a really good point. That's a good point. That's a really good point, E. I would do Epcot because it has fewer of those areas that get super congested and crowded. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, the whole place is kind of laid out better. I'm thinking, like, Rapunzel's bathroom when you said that. Yes. And I I just find it a more relaxing park for that reason. I just don't feel like you're on top of people all the time. Yeah. I like that. I like that too. Yeah, that's um, better restaurants for sure. I think. Sure. Oh my you know, gosh. Lot, yeah. Well, or at least a number of them. Yeah. Mm. Great. <laughs> better restaurants. All right. Um, I get. It sounds like we're all into Epcot. No. No. I'm gonna go Magic Kingdom. Okay. I'm gonna tell you why. Why is that? Because the question was, you can only visit one park. Doesn't say I have to visit the park. So it's hard for me to imagine. Like, there's not a must-see attraction. Maybe Soren. Maybe. It's not a must-see attraction in Epcot. It's hard for me to envision going on a Disney trip and not seeing Big Thunder Mountain, not seeing Haunted Mansion, not seeing Pirates of the Caribbean, not seeing, um, oh, really, those three for sure. I'll stop there. But the idea that I could just leave the park and not just hit that monorail loop and hit up um, Enchanted Rose, hit up uh, uh, the, not Ohana, um, well, you know what I'm telling you, uh, the Tambu Lounge. Ah. Trader Sam's hit up um, the contemporary, you know, like go over to uh, the California Grill, have my meals there, have my meals at Narcuzzi's, have my meals over at Ohana. You know, like I can still operate without 
outside of the park and not have to be in a park the entire time, I'm going to go with Magic Kingdom. But I can totally understand why I would go the other way on that one. Cause, and I get that. I totally get that. But I'm just, I'm going to lose that. I'm going to use that loophole. Sure. <laughs> of I, I can do that, but I don't have to do that. Makes sense. Yeah. yeah. That's my. Yeah. The yeah. reason why I would pick Epcot is so that I actually get to eat all at all the restaurants, maybe. Mm. For once in my life. I've never, like, there's still some restaurants I still haven't tried. Okay. You know, and so I'd like to actually give them a fresh shake so I can talk about a show and to fill my happy ass belly. So, <laughs> yeah. you know, I want to definitely get all those vittles in and, and, what's, and see. What's your, like, number one that you haven't visited yet? La Cellier, be honest. I've, never been, I've never been to La Cellier. I've been to La Cellier. I've had, the, like, the soup and stuff because they have that little kiosk there in food and wine, but I've never really sat down to have, like, a steak at La Cellier or the soup or anything else that they have is there like a must visit epcot restaurant for you right now is it a must visit no is there a must visit uh i think for some you know and i think with my family it has to be teppanetto because we always have such a good time at uh, teppanetto uh, yeah you know my that's why i want to try i've not yeah. been there yeah my kids actually eat at teppanetto <laughs> <laughs> you know it's like everything that they put in front of like especially my my middle child it's like fell in love with like, grilled shrimp griddle shrimp hmm. there and so that's she always asks oh we gotta go to Tepano we gotta go to Tepano I'm like okay well I actually take them there and they're actually gonna eat some stuff you know that's a good thing because <laughs> they don't you know I take them some other places they don't always eat but there they freaking devour the stuff I, you know I gotta be honest I, I, I don't think and I could be wrong but I don't think there's a restaurant we've missed in Epcot the only one I can think of that we missed was the third Japanese restaurant oh then the, the newest one yeah Takumi Te that one that's the only one I've missed and is that open right now, Rachel? Yeah, it just reopened. Okay, yes. then that when I go back, I'll that. We got to put that on the list. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Put aside some cash. <laughs> <laughs> oh really? Oh put yeah. Some cash. Yeah. Hey, if it's sushi, man, I'm I'm down. It is. I still want to get a crap <laughs> from. Uh, yeah. Oh look, yeah. Yeah. I haven't okay. been there yet. I haven't been, okay. There's always a line. You even got at the me. outside one. You got me on that one yeah. too. I didn't have not been the little crepe yet. I like a good crepe. It, it was good very crepe. long. Yeah. Yeah. New Orleans has so many good crepe places. This is true. Yeah, that's the I other know. thing. Yeah, you know. we do too up in New, ha- New Hampshire. So. Oh, great. Cool. cool. All right. So there's that one. Okay. Uh, this is one I came up with. This is another somewhat easy one. Would you rather bring back World of Motion or the original Journey into Imagination? Original journey into imagination. Yeah. I have not done either one. So I'm going to have to be exempted from this. <laughs> really? <laughs> oh, wow. I know. Yeah. Nope. Maybe if you put Horizons in the mix, I could see. World of Motion was nice and it was very comedic for what it was. But I mean, come on. Original Figment, that was. There's a reason that dragon is so beloved to this day. Oh, it's because of that attraction. It's because the attraction, everybody, yeah. it's not from this new version of it. It's It was from the older version. Have you seen videos of it, at least, uh, Rachel, or, yeah, or something? You, or? No, I should go back and look for some. Should, no, yeah. I haven't. You should, yeah, because, yeah, Figment used to be, my. he was my favorite character, for sure. Oh, Josh, too. Yeah, really? Yeah, he has, like, all of his childhood Disney trip photos. He's wearing, like, the Figment hat and, like... That's awesome. The plush and the whole, yeah. He was in. I used to have a figment on my bed. I used to carry him everywhere. So much so to one day, like, I would carry him because, you know, it was the easiest thing to grab the neck. So you grab him by the neck. And then next thing you know, my little figment would be like, like, oh, the neck <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. to the yeah. side. It didn't work so much. And so his neck was always <laughs> yeah. hanging off of him. It was sad. It was really sad when he went away. But tough times. All right. Here's one. Speaking of only their voice talent work, would you rather bring back Walt Disney to voice Mickey? Or Jim Henson to voice Kermit. Jim Henson to voice Jim Kermit, Henson. not even close. Yeah, yeah, Jim yeah. Henson. Yeah. yeah, even Walt was trying to get out of voice making. Yeah, that, that, I was I was leaning towards Jim as well because that is the voice of Kermit, for right? Sure. Yeah, that's especially if you've heard the new Kermit. My God, <laughs> I mean, that's the thing too. Is like the new Kermit. I mean, no disrespect to them, but no. it just doesn't hold a match. The guys that have been doing Mickey are not doing a bad job. Yeah. Know? And not to mention, once you bring back Jim Henson to voice Kermit, now you get Ralph back, you get Dr. Teeth back, you get Waldorf, I think, is the, is the one he, cause he did one of Statler and Waldorf. I think it was Waldorf. So many great characters. All right. Cool, cool. Mm. All right. So the second to last one. Would you rather high speed rail, high speed rail service or monorail service to and from the Orlando airport? Wait, Ooh. battery rail service or high speed? Yeah, because at some point Brightline was supposed to do something between or the MCO and oh, the parks, right. um, but it, I think something happened and it didn't yeah, quite pan not. out like that. Yeah, they're not doing it right. Mm-mm. So I'm like, well, I just had a hypothetical. Would you rather a high speed rail service or a monorail? I don't 
don't know enough about those two things of transportation or two modes of transportation, but I will say that high speed rail sounds more dependable than mm-hmm. the modern. Uh, yeah. <laughs> like, I would go with that. So whatever gets me there the fastest and the most dependable, that's what I want. Yes, yeah, the other one closer to the ground than the monorail. Yes. Yeah. Probably yeah. most likely so. Yeah. yeah, I want the one closest to the ground if okay. I can help it. <laughs> All right, that's fair. That's fair because if it, she's got a point, I was just thinking about it. I was like, yeah, if the thing breaks. Remember the time the one of the, one of those things break, the bottom or something broke and like the people had to go, get yeah, yeah, the ladders and stuff. Like, yeah. Yeah, it was like cliffhanger yeah. or something, right? The people were like, We can't get down, we're stuck in the middle of this train yeah. track. Yeah, I don't want that in my life. Give me the one closest to the ground, no matter how fast or slow it goes to the ground, I'm down. I think I'm gonna go with the monorail on this one. And I'll tell you why. Because if anything happens, the monorail is run by Disney. The the third, what, what is it? The bright line. Uh, there you the go. Bright line, yeah. It's going to be run by somebody else. So if I'm late for anything or if that thing gets messed up in any way, I get to go after Disney. Mm. Which means reservations, passes, yeah, yeah. Reservations, all that stuff. I get all that. That makes sense. Yeah. I, I was going to go for monorail as well, only because kind of like Magical Express, you get on that monorail, you're, I mean, from get off the airplane, get on to Disney. Right off the bat. Yep. Like no intermediary, no Lyft, no Uber, no Brightline, no no third party. Gotcha. Or even the little choo-choo train bus, whatever. I forget what they're called. Do you remember, do you remember Rachel, what the name of that? It's, it's, the, it's the buses that look like choo-choo trains. I like choo-choo bus. Oh, Sunshine Flyer. There, yeah, so yeah, Sunshine Flyer. That's it. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, even, even more so than those. Like if I got onto a Disney monorail, it's like, yeah, I'm there. I'm in Disney's hands. And if anything goes wrong, it's on Disney. All right. Last one. Just to kind of end this in, in an amusing way. How would you prefer to wake up every day of your trip? Kirk jumping into your bed <laughs> or Eli snoring? Oh, <laughs> oh. wow. Well, you will not sleep next to Eli snoring. Well, I, I will live, say that. So. I live through both. So. <laughs> you woke you yourself do not up? live through yourself snoring. We <laughs> suffer <laughs> through your snoring. Um, either one would be very strange for me. <laughs> <laughs> true. No, hey, look, either one's very strange for us, too. Yeah. <laughs> Because at least with Kirk, I can lock the door. <laughs> yeah. I got to go with Kirk. I slept next to this man, and I never slept. I don't know, man. Kirk lands on that bed, regardless of how you're sleeping. I mean, your you're snoring is no gentle, like, coming to America type string orchestra waking you up either. <laughs> no, I mean, no. But no, we shared a room next to him over at the Grand Hotel, and you could hear him through the walls. Oh, really? Oh, yes. <laughs> It's not even it's not even right, man. Yeah. Gotta, get that, gotta get that CPAP replaced, man. Man, I just, that's another story entirely. I, I really I really have been trying, but they yeah, they recalled it. I would definitely have to say though, it's kind of creepy to wake up one night and have Kirk like rummaging through your stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and you look over and he's just there, like, hey, you know, and just yeah, let it happen. Just let it happen. <laughs> what are you doing? Or, or like the time we stayed, we all hung out together. He was just happy, and he just jumped in there in the bed. It's like woo, and like nah. day, yeah. Because you're not ready for it. I, no, so, who's, who's that? It's like the Spanish Inquisition. Who's ready for it? Who's ready for it? Yeah, I wasn't. I guess I have to say, what would I rather? Yeah, what would you rather? I would. I, would, I guess I have to deal my own story. That just means I get up to use that's the bathroom. Good. That's comfy. But I'm not sneaking. No one is sneaking up on me. So yeah, yeah, that's a terrifying thing. I, I think I opted for Kirk only because once it happens, it's done. But that like Lee, Eli's is constant. Yes. You, there's no snoozing that. No. I had to blare Metallica <laughs> in my ears just so I could drown out the snoring <laughs> <laughs> and go to sleep. I don't think I could sleep with Metallica. <laughs> it's better than Eli snoring. <laughs> I guarantee you. That's why it's legend on this show. There's sure. a reason he's so. single, Rachel. It's the story. Oh, poor guy. No, that's that's fair, though. Uh, yeah? <laughs> no, <laughs> that's fair. That's why you give the orange juice. You see? <laughs> see I if can't. they get anything out of it, they get vitamin C. Absolutely. Is that what it is? Yeah. yeah. You might get sleep, e. but you get vitamin health. E and C. Mm-hmm. I do, I do yes. it for health. Yes. Oh, well, good. That's good. <laughs> well, there you have it, guys. There's our first little round of Would You Rathers. <laughs> questionnaires and stuff hope you enjoyed it i'd be curious to know what some of you listeners responded to as far as those would you rather questions uh you can get in touch with us to share any of your opinions on anything we talked about today and we're about to tell you how to do that in just a little bit well guys we hope you enjoyed that episode of the magic look magic is the way to go if you want to learn more about our social media links past episodes and more also 
to get in touch with us, to share all your opinions on any of the topics that we've talked about today, especially the Would You Rathers, you can do so through the following ways. Number one, shoot us an email at show at magicoway.com or call or send us a text message at one eight one five weekend That is one eight one five. Mo Weekend. Six six nine four two two six. And of course, we have a couple of people that do things outside of the podcast. First of all, we got Eli does things with comics. What's up, man? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You can always check out my site, www.ivycomics.com, where you can see all full colored comics that I have uh, Project Geisha, The Molly Be Dam, and Savages. And of course, there is a link to the Ivory Comics website to the Magic Galway podcast so you never miss an episode. So you can follow that link. You can always get all the synergy and all the love and all the creativity that's put out for you. So there you go. IvoryComics.com. Check that out. Uh, Facebook.com. Uh, right there. Uh, Eli H. Ivory is long as you're a real person. Lovely to meet you. But if you're a bot, I might have to start snoring and inhale you and just stick it back <laughs> out. <laughs> apparently. It's not pleasant. pleasant. It's not pleasant, bot. I think the bot would just get up and leave. Just walk out. Yeah, just, just walk out. <laughs> just jump on the bed with Kirk. No, <laughs> I can't take this. <laughs> I'm out of here. Self-destruct. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Every Alexa he's had has killed himself. <laughs> <laughs> and Siri, too. Siri, yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Also on Facebook, you could go to the Project Geisha uh, section I have there. So Facebook.com slash Project Geisha. Uh, Instagram, EIV504. You can find me there. And, of course, on Twitter, I can be found at Hancock1066. So if you appreciate the madness, you're just bringing me the gladness. Thank you very much. I'm going to go store now. In the, in the yeah. <laughs> Take it home. Take it home. And if you want to book a Disney Cruise Line vacation in Alaska or book a hotel room with Eli so you can experience the snoring, I'm sure you could do either <laughs> with uh, Rachel. Rachel, how can they do this? Yeah, I can do either of those things. Uh, holiday weekend coming up. A lot of times people play a would you rather with what time of year they go. And I am free advice for what time of year you should go. You know, there's no extra cost for booking with a travel agent and you just get the benefit of our experience and our advice and recommendations. I have done a lot of conversations with clients where I have them go different times of years that aren't very busy. But then I also have folks like me who teach and or their kids have school and they're limited to these holiday weeks. And I have a lot of experience helping people navigate holiday crowds. So either way, whatever you decide to book, I would love to help you. You can find me at Rachel at magicourway.com. Uh, you could also find me on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube at R Family Magic, the letter R and then the word family magic all one word and i have a phone number if you want to text me because i like to text it's a very efficient way to communicate Mm -hmm. and that phone number is 978-432-WISH w-i-s-h awesome and look in addition there's so many ways to support the show as a whole and you can find them all on our website magicourway.com plus if you want to elevate your support of the magic our way podcast go to patreon.com forward slash magic our way there you'll find six awesome tiers to support the show any way in which you can support the show is deeply appreciated. We also want to thank you for being a loyal listener. We always love hearing from our listeners. All opinions are always welcome on the Magic Are We podcast, so make sure you get in touch with us today, and that's no joke. So, Mohegans, we say Quaharini. My name is Kevin. I'm Danny. Magic out. And you are. Bye. <laughs> I love that. That's so funny. All right, let's get back to talking about some Disney guys. So, would you rather our jibber or our jabber? Either way, that's enough of that. Let's get on with the show. <laughs> what the f- was that? You could jibber great. with this, or you could you jabber wanna, with that. You want a jibber? You want you a, want a jabber? jabber? A jabber? That's kind of like would innuendo. <laughs> yeah, would you rather? Would you yeah, rather? A jibber or a jabber? 